before you start on a GLP-1 receptor agonist weight loss medication, whether it be tazepatide or semaglutide, it's important to acknowledge a few things. The first thing being that it might not work for you. This is a lot of money and you might find that it's just not the right medication. The problem that we've got is in the science, we know there are so many different causes of obesity. And yet the medicine is that we do the same thing for everyone. And we don't yet have a great way of differentiating which patients are likely to benefit really well from taking a GLP-1 and those who won't. So back in 2021, there is a hospital in the US called the Mayo Clinic. They did a study looking at people who struggle with obesity and how we're best to treat them. So instead of treating everyone exactly the same, they did something revolutionary and thought, what could be causing their obesity? Let's group them into different groups based on what might be causing it and try and aim our treatment at the cause. I know, incredible. So the four groups that they created were hungry brain, hungry stomach, emotional eaters, and slow burners. So obviously slow burner doesn't burn as many calories, emotional eater, completely self-explanatory. Those with a hungry brain were those people who needed to consume more calories to feel full. And those with a hungry gut were those for who their food passed through their system a lot quicker. And unsurprisingly, the hungry gut group were the group they decided to treat with a GLP-1. So these were older GLP-1s because this was back in 2021, but they were the only group they treated in this way and they used other medications for the other groups. And what they found was that by treating people based on what they thought was their underlying cause for obesity, shock horror, those patients lost more weight than the patients who were treated by the more traditional method of speak to their doctor, this is the US, so what will your insurance allow us to prescribe? What side effects are you open to? That sort of discussion. It is unsurprising that if you target the actual causes of obesity with your management, you are much more likely to have a positive outcome. Now, we don't have that support yet available in the UK. I do hope to contribute to that in some way in the future. That's a goal for me personally, professionally. But right now, if it doesn't work for you, it might just be the wrong approach. So don't worry and don't beat yourself up over it. The second thing before you start on a GLP-1 medicine is kind of tied in with that, but don't quit too soon. People like me are problematic. I come on social media, I talk about my huge and very quick weight loss. That is unusual. The reason I put my story out there is because it is so unusual and I wanted to share it. But most of my patients and the people that I speak to do not lose weight anywhere near as rapidly or respond quite so quickly to the medication. Tazepatide has a five day half life and it's eliminated from your body completely in about 30 days. This means if you dose it once a week, you are constantly building up the level in your system and it will take a few weeks to reach a steady state in your system. So you might find that how it benefits you increases week on week. Even for myself, the first week, I didn't really feel that different. I felt good, but my satiety wasn't any different. I didn't have any different cravings for food, etc. By week three to about week seven, I personally experienced a big change in how the medication affected me at the same dose. When you then look at a medication like semaglutide, semaglutide, which is Azempic and Wegovi, that has a seven day half-life. So again, if you're going to be starting that, don't rush up in your dose because you might find you get a natural increase in your benefits in the second month, but everyone's going to be a little bit different. Some people, their bodies will eliminate it quicker. Other people, it will take a little bit longer. But there is a reason that we say with these medications, if you're going to try and get pregnant, wait at least two months for it to completely come out of your system. And that's because they build over time. So just because in your first week, you don't feel massively different, don't write it off. And also for things like blood sugar regulation, 2.5 milligrams of tazepatide, the starter dose, is not deemed a treatment dose. It's an initiation dose. So maybe allow yourself to go up in a dose and see how you feel before you say, oh, this just isn't affecting me. And it's always important to remember that people are interesting. And for people, including myself, the first few weeks that I was on a GLP-1, my results were bigger than they should have been because I was so scared to eat. I was so nervous of getting side effects. And that again is something you commonly hear. So people who are a little bit more anxious are less likely to eat eat as much in those first few weeks. So they aren't necessarily getting huge benefit from the medication. They're just 
conscious of what's going on. So just because you hear people putting out big numbers from week one, don't feel that you need to do that. Ultimately, it's not a race. It's about long-term benefit. So if you take a little bit longer for it to kick in, that's fine. But allow yourself a good few weeks. Don't expect it all to change from day one. Side effects are a massive concern. And I'll be back very shortly with my second part of my side effects video. But one way you can try and reduce your likelihood of side effects on these medications is to eat really healthily. If you eat a lot of refined sugar, if you eat a lot of fat, some people will tell you that they don't have any side effects on these meds unless they eat really badly and then it all comes out. So if you can eat really healthily, you can potentially reduce your risk of side effects. This will not work for everyone. Some people will get side effects anyway. But if you're somebody who feels good day to day, then it might be worth just cutting back on the sugars and sweets and things and gradually reintroducing them if that's what you want to do, just to try and see what your body can tolerate on the medication. I wasn't going to include this because I think it's pretty obvious, but speaking to my friends and colleagues who work in A&E, which is where I spent the majority of my career, I'm speaking to them now about what sort of things are they seeing with patients who use GLP-1s? What sort of patients are you seeing coming through the door? And the most common thing that I hear over and over again is patients who have bought their medications off Facebook. <laughs> Do not buy your medications from somebody who's got it and then is selling it on because they don't need it or they've stopped it. All likely stories for those who are just pushing very scammy, very artificial, probably not even the drug medications. There have been documentaries about this on TV. Just don't do it. It is not worth paying anything for an unknown fluid to inject into your body. You have so many risks from doing that. It is unreal. Another point that I did want to talk about is the whole GLP-1 community online. I really like it. I think it's great that people are openly talking about weight loss in a way that doesn't relate to the old Weight Watchers and Slimming World days of restriction and punishing yourself and feeling guilt and all that stuff. I think the GLP-1 community is actually very positive in so many ways. But one thing I don't like about it is when people start pushing you products that you do not need. These medications are expensive already. And so to say you need to buy even more stuff, you absolutely don't. Unless your clinician recommends that you need additional supplements, etc., then they are not necessary. There are lots of companies that have reached out to me since I pivoted my channel into weight loss and they're saying, please, will you promote our supplements? And I won't because I don't need them and I haven't used any thus far. The only supplement I take is vitamin D because I have low vitamin D that has been shown on my testing through my GP. So I have to take that, but I don't take electrolytes. I don't take powder. Is, maybe I will in the future and I could certainly get benefit from them. They might make me feel better, but they are not necessary on these medications. If you are experiencing diarrhea, dehydration, vomiting, etc., then electrolytes might be useful. Again, speak to your doctor to see if that's the case for you. But over-the-counter supplements do come with their own risks. And whilst people are very aware of the risks of medications, they're not always aware of the risk of supplements, which are absolutely there. Just take your GLP-1 get what you need from your food, season your food, <laughs> it makes you feel good, and don't worry too much. I'm not saying don't use them. I'm not saying that they're all bad things. I think some people can get massive benefit from some of these things if they find what works for them. And I wouldn't rule out in the future that one would come along that I think, oh, I really like this, this works for me, and I would share that. But it is not necessary. So that was just a quick little video today. I hope you're all having a lovely week and had a lovely Easter. I have an Easter egg this year. I haven't allowed myself an Easter egg for years, but this year I just felt like I would like to get one. I still haven't touched it yet because I didn't feel like it over the weekend. I'll eat it when I fancy it. It's a whole new world. Have a lovely day. I'll be back very soon. Bye.